Hello. The purpose of this video is to introduce the program development cycle, which will be introduced in Chapter 2 and will be used throughout almost all of the Revel assignments for this course. As you can see on my screen, I've already logged into Revel and I've already entered um, the textbook dashboard and I'm ready to continue reading and I'm going to continue in Chapter 2 topics. So getting into Revel and um, other topics before this have been covered in previous lessons. So I'm going to continue my reading in Chapter 2 for the purpose of talking about the program development cycle. You can see the title of Chapter 2 is Input, Processing, and Output. And I'm particularly interested in the design process. So I'm going to click on Designing a Program over here in my reading list. And this is the topic of today's video, the program development cycle. You can see here uh, that in chapter one, we learned about um, an introduction to computers. So that's what chapter one covered. Chapter two is going to be covering the program development cycle and the design of the program, write the code, correct syntax errors, test the program, correct logic errors. And then once that's done, you go back and you try again. So this is a process that you'll be going through to get the Revel questions correct in Revel, as you will see demonstrated here in the video shortly. So this is a process we continue to go over. Uh, even when programs are considered uh, ready to be put into use, sometimes we still have to rewrite code, correct any errors that we find and test the program and then look for logic error. So this is a typical process. And it's important as students that you begin to understand the difference between syntax errors and logical errors. OK, so that's a topic that will be coming up in the, this course. All right. So now that we kind of understand what Chapter 2 was all about, we're going to go ahead and um, and take our first quiz. Now, you, you can take these quizzes ahead of time. Now, here's a quiz right here worth seven points. You can take these ahead of time, but these quizzes assume that you have read and understood. Now, some of you coming into this class will be ready to take the quiz without the reading. Others of you coming into this class will not be ready to take the quiz without the reading. So um, whether you read this or not is up to you based on how you do on these quizzes. So let's go ahead and start this quiz and see how things work in Revel. So I've, I've decided to go ahead and, and work on this quiz. It's worth seven points. And I'm going to click on that and wait for the quiz to come up. And the quiz is going to be displayed in code grade. And this is a one question out of one question for this quiz. And uh, which of the following statements displays the output one, two, three, that, you know, one, a space, two, a space, three, a space, all on one line with no um, punctuation or anything like that. Um, would this do it? Yep. Would this do it? Yep. Because the single quotes and the double quotes in Python are essentially the same in almost all cases. And would this do it? And the answer is yes, because they're using single and double quotes. And, and so the answer is all of the above. OK, so now we can go over here and you'll be learning to hit run after each question. And when you do, you'll see a check indicating that you got this one correct. OK, so I'll finish that quiz. So I'll close out of the quiz and I got that one correct. And now I'm going to move on to the next quiz. So I will be scrolling down here on the left. And the next quiz is um, a variables quiz at the end of section on the programming. And it's worth seven points. So I'll click that. And we'll start this. And this should bring me into code grade. OK. And that's one thing the teacher has to do. All right. So it says goal. Learn to declare and assign variables or values to variables. Write a statement that assigns the value of pi to the variable pi. So 
uh, what I would do is type in pi and set it equals to, and you can either have the spaces on the side, both sides of the equals or the spaces here don't matter. And then I just want to uh, either type or copy this value. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy and paste her myself. So I'll paste that in right there. And then I have them worked through here before. Um, the code grader likes for you to have a blank line at the end. So I've hit enter. Um, now I want to see if, if that's correct and I want to run that to see what happens here. And you can see down here, it's going to evaluate the setup. It's going to evaluate, um, the syntax and it gave me one out of one for the syntax and the feedback. I got one out of one. So I got this correct because these are all ones right here. Okay. So I got that correct. I'm not ready to hand in because you can see there's four questions in this quiz. So I'm not ready to hand this into the teacher yet. Okay. So um, I want to go ahead to the next question. I'll hit the next arrow to get to the next question. And the goal is to learn to reassign valuables and variables and use a string function. All right. And it says, assume that the variable value exists and has been assigned an integer value. So something like five or something has been assigned to the variable value. Write a statement that assigns to value the string representing of its value. So um, so we want to set the, the variable value to its string equivalent. And we'll use the string function for that. And So this should assign to value the string representing um, the value. And I've got an, I've got a blank line, but I'll hit, hit enter there just to make sure. I've got two blank lines. That really doesn't matter. You can see down here on syntax, it sorry looked at that. I'm going to hit run to see, see what um, code grader says. And you can watch it work here. Um, they're one of one, they're one of one. So I got this one correct also. So that's the answer for that one. So I'm on question two out of four. So now I'm going to go into the next question, which is the best identifier for a variable to represent the amount of money your boss pays you each month? Uh, well, not enough. That's funny, but that's not what they want. Uh, monthly pay looks like the uh, best um, variable to describe what my boss is wanting there. So um, I'm going to check that out. And you can see there was a check there real quick indicating that that one was correct. And then I will go ahead to my fourth question here. And the goal is learn how to show output to the user. Um, assuming the variable price already exists, write a statement that displays the value of price. So that's going to be simple. Now we know in Python, if you've read the section that the print function allows you to display uh, the value of variables. So if I tell the program that I wanted to print price and hit enter, uh, and then I'm going to run that and see how that goes. And we're going to watch here and see. Um, sometimes if it's busy, it takes a little longer. And you can see over here how long it's taking. It's, it's, so this means it's running. There we go. One and one. So I'm good there. So I finished this quiz. I'm not ready to hand it in yet because I haven't done everything in chapter two. So now I'm finished with this and I want to exit out of here and I'm going to now read more in the chapter. And after I read um, 2.6, I Take the quiz on 2.6, which is what I'm getting ready to do here. Let's go ahead and hit start. Um, again, if you're not getting these questions right, you should go back and read the sections that pertain to the quiz. Okay, this is one out of one. And you can see this probably has a lot more information here than what I'm seeing. So I'm going to pull this down so I can read. I'm going to need to push it back up in a minute, but I'm going to pull it down and the teacher has to you know, hit that button. Um, okay. So this looks like, um, uh, everything here. Let me see. It might not be, I think that is everything. Um, so goal, learn how to read input data from the user and store it in variables with the correct types. Um, so we want to write, uh, some code that, um, takes input as follows. So 
Um, we want to get an int from the keyboard and assign it to that variable. We want to get a float and assign it to that variable. And we're going to string and assign it to that variable. And then they want to print them in various uh, order. So um, that's what we're going to do. All right, so I'm going to pull this up right here. And I'm going to uh, use the input function. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to copy that variable and paste it right there and set it equal to input. And I want to have this function return an int. So I will, will surround the input function with the int function. And that's the first line. And then, oops, I do have to spell things right. All right, so now I want to get the float variable done very similarly. So I'll copy that. And I think I didn't copy my F, so let's see. Yeah, equals float of input. And that one should handle that. And then... Um, Now, by default, the input function returns a string. So I think I'm good there. Now they want to print. So let's see if we can scroll over here and get a look at this. Uh, okay. So I want to print that one first, that one second, that one third, uh, all on one line. Then the variable should be separated by one space. And the format is not accepted. So um, we want to print um, this. And I'll take some of that syntax out of there. So, you know, the comma um, is going to let it be separated by one space. So I'll put a comma there. And there's, that should be that line. And then um, they want them in this order. So to me, it's just easy to copy and paste this so that I don't make any typos. <clears throat> and then just take out what I don't need. Uh, that works for me. you got to figure out what works for you. Uh, as you go through these, um, just got to know what to take out. I think that got it in the order that they wanted it in. And then um, the last one here. Get that one. Put it in there. All right. And don't forget my comma here. All right. And then I want a blank line at the end. All right. Let's run this and see if this thing is going to pass. So it's analyzing it now. Here goes the second count off. And it looks like I got it all correct. Um, so I got one and one. And it's good. And I'm finished with this quiz. And then. So that's the process. Uh, I'm not going to do all of them for you. I'll leave some of those for you to do. Um, so. As we go through here, we just uh, got a couple of more here. Um, 2.9. We just did 2.6. So we got to do 2.9. That's, that's the, oh, there's 2.7 here uh, that we're going to need to do. And then there's uh, 2.9. And then there's 2.10. And I believe that's all there is as far as grades that from Revel. There are other grades in the class, but these are the Revel grades for this class. And so that, that pretty much gives you an overview of how to uh, use code grade in Revel and get your, and when, once you finish, once you finish, so when you do your last one right here, um, your uh, seven points on quiz 2.10, then at that point, once you've completed all of your assignments uh, for chapter two and, and you have unlimited um, 
attempts on these, except for the multiple choice and true false, but you have unlimited attempts on these. And um, once you finish, you want to be sure you hit hand it in and that'll post your grades um, to the necessary place. Okay. I hope that answers all your questions concerning getting going with Revel and code grade. And also uh, with respect to the program development cycle, um, you know, had I missed any of those, I would have had to kept trying until I got it right. And uh, this concludes the video. I hope you have a great day and I hope you are enjoying programming.